Over the last few years, we all got to experience an infectious disease outbreak as COVID-19 and its many Kang-like variants spread around the globe. But historically speaking, epidemics and even pandemics are not all that uncommon. Since the moment we existed on Earth, humans have constantly been getting each other sick. So today we're looking back at the most significant infectious diseases of every century. But before we get to all the runny noses and weird rashes, make sure you subscribe to the Civilizatopedia channel. Then drop, drop down into the comments and let us know your favorite cold or flu remedy. All right, disturbed fans, let's get down with the sickness. Basic familiarity with leprosy, though not by name, goes all the way back to the ancient world. The Bible mentions a number of skin disorders that may have included leprosy. And in the New Testament, Jesus famously heals some of the afflicted rather than shunning them the Hindu vast dating all the way back to 20,000 BCE mentioned skin diseases that likely include leprosy, and many historians also believe that ancient Greek and Roman references to elephantitis actually refer to patients with leprosy symptoms. The widely feared illness became associated with gruesome disfiguring symptoms, but at its core, it's a bacterial infection that damages the nerves, respiratory tract, skin, and eyes because the nerve damage can result in an inability to feel pain in your extremities. It could lead to repeated infections or even remove of the limbs. Leprosy really needs. A better publicist prolonged exposure is required for the bacteria to jump between humans though. If the sick person is coughing or leaking a lot of fluid from their nose, that can help contribute. This also made it more common in low-income areas where people lived closer together in less hygienic environments by the 10th century in Europe. Leprosy was among the most pressing public health issues in the early Middle Ages. The Roman Church began setting aside funds for leopard colonies and clinics, separating patients from the general population so they could be looked after. Often by monastic orders in present day, Belgium alone, it's believed there were up to 800 such clinics. Around the First Crusades, there wasn't much available in the way of actual medical treatment for these unfortunate patients. The main goal was not so much curing their disease as quarantining the sick to prevent any wider spread. Today, leprosy is typically treated with antibiotics. So if anyone invented a time machine, now would be a good time to give it to a doctor, or we could just let the antibiotics by themselves. Influenza was also a serious concern in medieval times. Though we can't be fully certain that every outbreak referred to as the flu at the time actually was, many infections with a similar symptom. Profile were likely floating through the air, and medieval doctors didn't necessarily associate respiratory illness with the flu. Misdiagnoses were extremely likely that being said, the first confidently the flu pandemic started around in the year 1510 in East Asia, before spreading to North Africa and Europe. Following this major outbreak seasonal influenza, occurred with additional pandemics in 1557 and 1580. By the close of the 16th century, the disease was far better understood, but at the cost of mass infection and death. In fact, it's estimated that nearly everyone in the impacted area was infected with a death rate of around 1%, despite medical advances. In understanding the disease, flu outbreaks remained a routine problem throughout modern European history in 1729. An influenza outbreak spread rapidly across Europe, reached pandemic proportions within six months, and ultimately made it to the Americas, an even larger scale. Influenza outbreak happened in 1781, which is believed to have started in China before spreading around the world. This one claimed tens of millions of lives and was particularly devastating to youth populations. The bubonic plague outbreak commonly known as the Black Plague or the Black Death swept across Europe, Western Asia and North Africa starting around 1346. And that's not just a spooky nickname. It really was among the most fatal pandemics in recorded human history, causing an estimated 75 to 200 million deaths. That's about 30 to 60 percent of the entire European population at the time, completely removed like a bad tattoo for a long time. Historians believe that the plague reached Europe and spread so quickly due to the Mongol conquests of the 14th century, but there's sample evidence backing up. Alternate theories, for example, fleas traveling on rats living on Genoese ships, may have carried the illness around the Mediterranean, including North Africa, and throughout the Italian peninsula, that's a nesting doll we don't want to play with. Plague remained an ongoing concern for Europeans for several hundred years, 
The final major outbreak occurred in London in 1665, and often estimated 100,000 people. About a quarter of the city's entire population. In just 18 months, London in this period was both dirty and crowded, making it an ideal breeding ground for plague bacterium. Poor parts of the city were densely overpopulated, filled with crowded tenement buildings and a sanitation system consisting of open drains flowing through the city streets, just a lot of uncovered poop rivers. So think about that the next time you complain about English weather or weird breakfasts. It could always be worse. Let's switch gears to syphilis, which is something you never want to hear from your general practitioner. This is also caused by a bacteria and typically gets spread during sexual contact. The infection progresses in four stages, starting with sores on the skin, followed by a rash and potential mouth. Sores and then a latent period without new symptoms which can last for several years, during which time patients remain symptom-free but can be as infectious as a tasty groove. But then the final stage involves non-cancerous growth, surround the body plus neurological and heart symptoms, which can include dementia seizures and severe depression. The, the earliest historical report about a syphilis outbreak occurred during France's invasion of Naples, Italy in 1494. For a time, the illness was known as the French disease. Because of this connection, the term syphilis didn't arise until it's used by Italian physician and poet Jomo Thoreau in 1530. Sacra Blue, in a fortunate stroke of luck, syphilis was the first major new disease to be recognized and diagnosed following the development of the printing press news about the disease, how to detect it and how to avoid it, spread far more quickly because of this innovative leap in mass communication. Think of these as history's first, the more you know, PSAs. Historians still don't exactly know how syphilis came to Europe. Some argue it had already existed, but just been misdiagnosed as other illnesses. Syphilis was sometimes referred to as the great imitator, because its symptoms can so readily resemble other illnesses, like a Valen Impressionist. Others theorize that syphilis actually started in the New World and came back to Europe, along with Christopher Columbus's crew. This vast transfer between old and new worlds became known as the Columbian Exchange, while syphilis potentially spread from Caribbean populations to Europe. Illnesses passing from European travelers to American natives were far deadlier. A 1493 outbreak of the swine influenza devastated the TYO population in the Caribbean measles. Whipping cough, chicken pox, typhus, and malaria were also concerns but by far the most devastating European illness to spread through the Americas was smallpox and an estimated 40% of the population of the Aztec capital. Tino Tlan succumbed to smallpox in 1520 during the invasion of Cador Eran Cortez. He was not a chill dude in general. Disease wiped out far more Native Americans than war around 80 to 95% of the total Native American population perished in epidemics within the first 150 years after Columbus arrived in 1492. They tend to leave that part out of the ocean. Blue Rhyme